Akkor a győzelmet arattunk, hogy még a Holdról is látszik, de, de Brüsszelből egészen biztosan. Az egész világ láthatta ma este itt Budapesten, hogy a keresztény demokrata politika, a konzervatív polgári politika és a hazafias politika győzött. És azt üzenjük Európának, hogy ez nem a múlt, ez a jövő. Ez lesz a mi közös európai jövő. Meggyertük! Meggyertük! Ez a győzelem azért is marad majd emlékezetes talán uh, életünk végéig, mert most kellett a legnagyobb túlerővel megküzdeni. A baloldal itthon, a nemzetközi baloldal körös körül, a brüsszeli bürokraták, a soros birodalom minden pénzei szervezete, a nemzetközi fősodratú média, és a végén még az ukrán elnök is. It is Monday morning in Athens, Greece, and we have a lot of news to get to. So, as I'm walking, I'm going to stop by the National Gallery, sit on this bench, and uh, let's talk about the news. We have a lot of topics to talk about, including a, a clown world, or maybe I'll, I'll call the topic a clown person for today, but we'll leave that to the end of the video. And so I did a video here from this spot at nighttime, so let's do one in the daytime as well, in the morning. It's a comfortable bench here. A little noisy because of morning traffic, but that's all right. So we have a lot of news to talk about over the weekend. Where should we begin? Where should we begin? Let's, uh, let me get out my phone here because I have a lot of quotes that I want to get to as well. Where is it? Here we are. All right. So we had a lot of voting taking place over the weekend. We had the failed regime change in Pakistan. Uh, Imran Khan outsmarted, outsmarted them all. And uh, election in 90 days. And I think the guy's going to, to crush it. He's going to win it. So Pakistan wanted to stay neutral. The regime changers, the plotters, wanted Pakistan to go against China and Russia and not look after its own national interests. Khan was under fire, both from his own party and his, uh, his general, some people in his party, and the generals, but he outsmarted them all. And uh, he's got the elections that he wanted. He game planned this perfectly. He was, he was 10 steps ahead. So anyway, that is what happened in Pakistan. I did some videos on it. Big news. We had the big elections in Serbia. Vucic and his Serbian Progressive Party, they won around 59% of the vote. Big, big win for, for them. In the parliament, I think they got 43% of the seats. So they don't have a majority in the parliament, but they're going to be working with the, um, I believe the Socialist Party, who they've worked with in the past. So they have, uh, they have worked with this party before and they're going to form their coalition and they're going to govern. But uh, Vucic won big. So he is, uh, he is the dominant force in Serbian politics. No doubt about it. But he won on a platform that was uh, based on being pro-Russia and anti-globalist because he had the Rio Tinto, the mining company that was trying to, to get into Serbia and pillage Serbia. And uh, he, he kicked them out. He kicked those guys out. Those guys may have may have had a hand in getting uh, Djokovic out of the Australian Open as well, but uh, that's that's a different topic. I'm sure they did play a role in uh, getting Morrison to kick out Djokovic from the Australian Open, but uh, Vucic kicked them out of the country. Power move, and uh, he was pro-Russian, and it paid off. Fifty-nine percent of the votes. And it was, it was tight before the, the conflict uh, broke out in Ukraine. But Vucic took a, took a firm stance and it paid off. And then you had the big elections in Hungary. And I've got to read you some of the quotes from Orban, Fidesz. His party won out big. By the way, there was also a referendum in Hungary. And the referendum was uh, very much like the DeSantis bill with uh, children and... Uh, and sex education and all of this stuff, what they call the don't say gay bill in Florida, which doesn't even have the word gay in it, but there you can see the media and marketing manipulation. But um, Hungary had the same type of proposal 
and they put it up for referendum. And let me let me get this out to you. The voter turnout on this specific uh, question, 67 percent, 92 and 96 percent of the people voted no against the questions asked in this uh, in this referendum. 92 to 96 percent voted no. And here are the four questions. Do you support the teaching of sexual orientation to underage children in public education institutions without parental consent? People voted no. Do you support the promotion of sex reassignment therapy for underage children? People voted no. Do you support the unrestricted exposure of underage children to sexually explicit media content that may affect their development? People voted no. And do you support the showing of sex change media content to minors? 92 to 96 percent of people voted no. So that is a huge mandate for the Orban government and for Fidesz to uh, get this legislation out. That is very similar to DeSantis and Florida's legislation. Very, very similar. What does that tell you? 92 to 96 percent. Now, let's get into some of what Orban said during his speech. This was a, this was a classic. What a speech he gave. So it was about a 10 minute speech that he gave to supporters in Budapest. The crowd was cheering Orban, Orban. And this is what Orban said. Here are some of the quotes. We want a victory so big that you can see it from the moon and you can certainly see it from Brussels. <laughs> wow, what a statement there. Uh, while he was speaking to supporters, Orban also singled out Zelensky and he called it part of the overwhelming force that was trying to remove him. Quote, the left at home, the international left all around, the Brussels bureaucrats, the Soros empire, with all its money, the international mainstream media, and in the end, even the Ukraine, the Ukrainian president, they could not defeat the will of the people. They could not defeat the Hungarian electorate. Quote, the whole world has seen tonight that Budapest, that Christian democratic politics, conservative civic politics, and patriotic politics have won. We are telling Europe that this is not the past. This is the future. Incredible statements. Only the good God knows why we won when they all ganged up on us together, Orban said. We have a common passion, hungry. I mean, <laughs> the quotes were, were, were stunning. We're stunning. Orban went on to say that the Hungarian left was the worst investment, and I quote, of Uncle George Soros as it has been swallowing money for 12 years now. Orban sent a message to the international power center saying that they have never had as many enemies as they have now from foreign media all the way to the Ukrainian president. But all the money of the world cannot stop us now and we will get through even the thickest walls. An incredible speech from an incredible leader and uh, Zelensky on Saturday, he was pleading with the Hungarian people to vote against uh, Orban. He said, quote, he is virtually the only one in Europe to openly support Mr. Putin. Well, Vucic also won and he supports Mr. Putin. And in France, we will uh, have elections soon and the polls are tightening. Macron was, was uh, looking like the outright winner, but now it looks like Le Pen is picking up steam. And I won't even say that Orban supports Mr. Putin. That's just a wrong way to, to phrase it. There was, there was an article in the, uh, I think it was the Associated Press, and the title says, Hungary's pro-PM Orban claims victory in the national vote. You see how they're positioning this? Pro-Putin, pro pro-Putin. Orban was just pro-neutrality. He was like, let's just stay out of this. Let's just make sure we have gas and commodities and let's try to avoid this, this inflation and the sanctions and just do what's best for the Hungarian people. And that's, that's pro-Putin. To do what's best for the Hungarian people is seen as pro-Putin. Just manipulation. It is just manipulation. That's all it is. But um, big win for Orban. And it's gonna be interesting to see what happens in France. We have the first indications now that these sanctions, the inflation, the rising costs, 
they're going to hurt Europe and they're going to hurt a lot of European union leaders in a big, big way. They think that they can just punish the people as they wish, that they can sanction Russia and cause massive amounts of pain on their own population. In other words, sanctioning their own population in effect. And, uh, and they're not going to face any consequences. Well, I think that uh, the landslide win from Orban and from, uh, from Vucic shows that you have to look after your people. And as far as Ukraine goes, well, I've said it many, many times. Ukraine is not a member of the European Union, so I just don't understand why the people of Europe should be suffering in, in the way they are going to suffer. I was reading an article from uh, a publication called Locals.de, and they were uh, interviewing some people in the, in the supermarket industry and some officials that were in charge of supermarket prices and the regulation of those prices. And they said that Germans, this is in Germany, they said that Germans should expect a massive rise in prices across the board for everything in the supermarket. And that already as of this week, I believe this week or the next, prices are gonna go up from 20 to 50% across the board on everything in a supermarket and they also cautioned this is just the beginning why are europeans paying the price for this why why are we going along with this it, it makes no freaking sense at all at all anyway that was the big news with regards to all the elections that uh that took place what else do we have we have the uh the butcher the Butcher thing. So you, you, you had uh, the Azov guys enter this village and there's video now surfacing and these guys are wearing their blue ribbons, their blue uh, bands around their arms and they're actually filming themselves saying they're going to take out people with white armbands. And uh, this is just da a damning video. Y you know, social media on the one hand, it helps the the globalists push out their lies but on the other hand it helps it helps us spot their lies and even more than that even these azov guys they can't avoid the temptation of filming themselves and then of course you have the uh the russian government and they're on top of this it seems and they're calling a u.n security council meeting and they're saying this this is their quote um, on a Telegram post, they said, in light of the blatant provocation by Ukrainian radicals in Bucha, Russia has demanded a meeting of the UN Security Council to be convened on Monday, April 4th. We will bring to light the presumptions Ukrainian provoc provocateurs and their Western patrons. So Russia right away is calling for an investigation. They want an independent investigation. They want a UN Security Council meeting. They're going to present the, their case and... Uh, We'll see. You know, Robert Barnes in, uh, in a live stream on Viva Frey that they did, I think Robert Barnes said it best. If the United States and if the collective West slow walks an independent investigation that the Russians are calling for and that they're going to uh, ask for at the U.S. Security Council, if they slow walk it, then that means that this is just one of many Ghost of Kiev, Snake Island, BS, uh, false flags. If they go along with it, then great, let's have an independent investigation and see what happens. If they start to slow walk it and they don't want an investigation, then we know exactly what's going on. So let's see this play out. Let's have an investigation. I agree with the Russians that take this to the UN Security Council. I'm not a fan of the UN, but ask for an independent investigation, an independent investigation. And uh, let's get people there on the ground and see what happens. That is the best way to go about this. And the investigation is going to take time. But let's take the time and see what, uh, what occurred there. If they slow walk it, if the Collective West slow walks it, and they say, no, no, we already know you're guilty and you're just trying to, to manipulate things and we don't want an investigation and we want to do our own investigation and we want our own guys there and our own NGOs there, then you know that, they're, uh, that they've been busted. But I think there's ample evidence out there to show that this is very, very fishy. Very fishy. And uh, just the fact that for four or five days you had 
I think it was the mayor of that town, actually on video, you have him on video when the Russians left that city, on video saying, not, not mentioning this incident at all, I think is, is reason enough to say, what are you talking about, what, what's going on? If this government official is on video saying that the Russians have left and everything is, is all right and making these statements on video and he doesn't mention the fact that there's bodies in the streets, Moon of Alabama has a timeline of this and I'll put it up. I'll put up that timeline. They kind of go over the, the very short timeline as to what happened and why this is very suspicious. Anyway, you know, at, at the end of the day, let's get an independent investigation and see what happened. I think that's the best possible approach, the best approach. But uh, I, think, I think the Collective West is not going to want an investigation. That's my hunch on this. That is my hunch. You know, but when you look at all of these false flags, whether it's Snake Island or Ghost of Kiev or the nuclear power plant in Zaporozhye and, and all of these things, the theaters and the schools and all these things that have been proven to be complete uh, uh, provocations, you just got to go back to what is the aim of of NATO and the collective West. What do they want? What do these globalists want? They've said it. It's statement after statement. They want a prolonged insurgency. So they're going to do everything in their power, whether it's get weapons and arms into Ukraine, uh, whether it's pump as much money as they can, whether it's create false flags, media narratives, social media, big tech, mainstream media, whatever they need to do to keep people focused on this war and to keep demonizing the, uh, the Russians and to keep the narrative going and to keep the insurgency alive and to keep Ukraine military hopeful that they're, that they're gonna be saved or that they have a chance to win. Even the Ukraine military that's pinned down in Donbass and is about to get annihilated, which is terrible. I mean, this is a crime that they're gonna let 60,000 people uh, die, but if the collective West has to keep their hopes alive and keep this story going, they're going to do it because they want a prolonged insurgency. My guess is that they want to drag this out and for as long as they can, and then they're going to focus on pumping up the West full of weapons. And their goal is to create some sort of guerrilla warfare or something in the West of Ukraine to, uh, to keep this, this conflict moving. So anyway, that's, uh, that is that story. And let me think, oh, the clown world. This is not a clown world, but this is a clown person. And so Bono, the singer of U2, was in uh, DC and he met with Anthony Blinken. And let me put up the photo so you can see Bono's clownish behavior. And uh, of course, Blinken was, was uh, showering Bono with praise and Bono was showering Blinken with praise and they just got along famously. And I, and I say to myself, what happened to this guy? Man, people in Ireland, what happened to Bono? Their music used to be good. Back in the day, their music was good. I mean, The Joshua Tree is one of my favorite albums. And uh, he just, he fell apart, this guy. He ended up supporting Bush. He supported Bush. He was in love with Obama. I mean, in love with Obama. And uh, he loves Hillary Clinton. He supports Biden and Blinken. What is wrong with, with Bono? The one person he hated was Trump. What does that tell you? And from what I understand, every, every vote or every referendum that has taken place in Ireland that has been like pro-Ireland, like nation state sovereignty of Ireland, every referendum that has taken place, Bono has opposed it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand this guy, what happened to him? I really do not understand what happened to, to him. It, Back in the day when he was younger, he wasn't like that. But I guess as he got older and he started hanging out with George Soros, which he did hang out with Soros many times. We've got it on video. It seems that Bono just just fell apart. The guy ended up being a tool of the uh, of the globalists. Anyway, clown world. Maybe we'll call it clown person for today. But um, I wish Bono would get back to trying to make some good albums because the last records he made were absolute crap. His old, his old records were great. The old albums they made were great, but the new ones are crap. And instead of visiting people like Blinken, maybe he should concentrate on, uh, on getting back to making good music. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave it there, everybody. Vindurad.locals.com. Check out Alexander's channel. He, uh, he did a big video yesterday. He talked about Odessa. 
and what's going on there. And he just did a good deep dive into what's happening in Ukraine. And uh, did I say the Duran.locals.com? The Duran.locals.com. And uh, the Duran as well. We're going to be doing a live stream today with Scott Ritter. So check it out. It'll be a good one. Take care. <laughs>